Welcome back. Let's return to 3 News political editor Patrick Gowan. He's joined by the former editor of the New Zealand Herald, Gavin Ellis, along with our political commentator, Colin James, who's with us from Wellington. Uh, Colin James, if I can start with you, what do you make of what you've just heard? Well, uh, this is the Prime Minister's inquiry. He set it up. He was embarrassed by the leak uh, and angry by it, a bit like the Tea Party thing back in uh, the 2011 election and now it's come back to bite him. And the uh, distinction that some people try to draw between the Chief of Staff and the Prime Minister is an artificial distinction when the Chief of Staff or the Prime Minister uh, uh, says something. That is the Prime Minister speaking. Uh, so that's the, that's the broad issue. Uh, the second thing is there's already uh, two bodies on the floor and I think there might well be some more bodies on the floor by the time this has ended. Uh, it's, a, it's a mess. Now the final thing is that this has actually been managed rather poorly. All right, Paddy Gower, uh, Colin James says there's a couple of bodies on the floor, there may be more. What do you think is going to be happening in the coming coming weeks? Yeah, well, there may well be more bodies because we need to get some, we need to get some more answers here. And if I could just start by um, uh, responding to Stephen Joyce, who has said that the media are hypocrites for pursuing this information. Well, there's a crucial difference. Uh, after the David Henry inquiry, yes, some media, including Tober O'Brien in my office, went and looked for those emails, but they requested them under the Official Information Act 1982, under the law, as we are completely justified to do. It is totally different to intruding without permission, taking the emails without permission. It is a totally different thing, and the request was declined. Kevin Ellis, it has been a remarkable few weeks. What it have you made been. of what we've heard this morning? <laughs> well, I think that the, the point that most disturbed me was almost a throwaway line by Stephen Joyce that uh, some politicians and certain sections of the media were making more of this than was actually there. This is far more serious, I think, than the government perhaps realises. There are constitutional and democratic issues in play here that simply can't be ignored. Um, and I think that too little regard is being given to that by the government in their handling of this. Colin James, do we need to hear a little more from the Prime Minister on this? What do you make of his behaviour throughout? <laughs> well, he's attempted to keep himself above it. But as I said before, when the Chief of Staff talks, that's the Prime Minister talking. When the Chief of Staff acts, that's the Prime Minister acting. So even if he tries to keep himself above it, he's actually in it. Uh, and, and can't, can't get away from it. Can I just take uh, uh, Gavin's uh, comment a little bit further? This is not just a constitutional issue, it's also an issue of privacy in the modern age. Uh, those, ac those records could not have been accessed 30 years ago because they didn't exist, and now they can. And so we're going to see more of this sort of thing, either by accident or by design, we're going to see use and misuse of information. And it's not just the government. It's also, as Marie Schroff keeps reminding us, it's the private sector, private companies are mining information, using it and misusing it. So this is a much bigger issue than just the journalist issue and just the constitutional issue and just mismanagement uh, of an inquiry. Kevin Ellis, is that the case? Because, you know, as journalists, we're all uh, fairly hot under the collar about this. Does it matter to, you know, your average man and woman on the street? It should. Uh, unfortunately, in this country, we have an almost suicidal disdain of anything that has the word constitution in it. Um, when I was chair of the Media Freedom Committee and we were battling an attempt to reintroduce criminal libel into this country, huge implications constitutionally and democratically, uh, we got no traction with the public whatsoever. But of course, ultimately, a failure on the part of the public to take note of these issues can lead to a situation where they don't have any control over the well, powers. Yeah, I mean, look, it, look, it's, a pretty, uh, it's a pretty complex area, but if we take a step back for a second and look at what Andrea Vance actually did, which is she did her job, she broke a story, it ended up embarrassing the government. Now, if we went down the street and ask the average person on the street, what do you want journalists in the press gallery or journalists full stop to do? Do you want them to hold the government, government to account? They would all say yes. They would like to see more stories like Andrea Vance's. And if we ask them a second question, very simply, would do you want to see journalists spied on, their privacy intruded on when they embarrass the government? All those people would say no. So of course it is of a, a huge amount of interest to the public. All right, Patrick Garrett, okay. political editor, Gavin Ellis. Sorry, Colin James, we've run out of time, okay. but thank you.